Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and to all of y'all out there that's watching me. I'm Dual, aka the Big D, a Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Back again with another ranking in an installment of a series of rankings I'm going to do from movies from, well, each year since I've been born. This time around, I'm doing 2004, and this time I'm going to include just 15, but I've got lots of honorable mentions, so I'll try and rapid fire through them if I take too long with these up. 15 movies. So here we go. Coming in at number 15 is Christmas with the Cranks with Tim Allen and Jamie Lee Curtis. I relived this movie last year. It's funny as I remember seeing I've seen it a couple of times a few years back, but now I saw it again. Well, it's become a favorite holiday flick. I do enjoy it. Dan Aykroyd's in it. The cast is just hysterical in it. I absolutely love it, this movie. Next at number 14 is Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, starring Jim Carrey as Count Olaf. Now, I haven't seen the recent Netflix series starring Neil Patrick Harris as Olaf. I, I think I've heard it's supposed to be good. I don't know. But anyway, this movie's not too bad. Probably doesn't get talked about a lot, but I do... You know, I like Carrie's portrayal as Olaf. I, I almost didn't know he was actually a, well, an actor who did all sorts of things. I've never read the book, so. But anyway, I really do think the movie's pretty good and all. The, the one, the kids who play the Baudelaire children, very, were very good. I do think this was very fun and all. Next at number 13 is The Punisher. Starring Thomas Jane in the towel role, along with John Travolta and Samantha Mathis and Roy Shire. Now, this movie might loosely follow the story based on the Marvel Comics character, but still, I do like it for certain reasons. I mean, Thomas Jane does do a pretty good performance as Frank Castle, a.k.a. the title character, John Travolta playing Howard Sane to MZ, the main antagonist, eh, not too bad. But anyway, the movie has some overall cool action and fun. If you've never seen it, I'd recommend you check it out. Next at number 12 is Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Yep. I do like this movie, although I don't have it on DVD anymore. I had the unrated version. I've only seen... A little bit of the theatrical version. I should have seen that one. I kind of realize that has a ton of potty mouth for even something like that. But anyway, I do like it for certain reasons. Because not just Will Ferrell, but this took place in the 70s. I, I loved the characters. Veronica, played by Christina Applegate. Like, David Kochner as Champ. And Paul Rudd as Brian. And Steve Carell as Brick. Very good group of guys i loved the battle of the newscasters that was probably the best moment of this movie i absolutely love it so if you haven't seen it check it out you want to see the anime version go ahead and knock yourself out but don't say i didn't warn you but you stay classy <laughs> okay next at number 11 is mean girls Starring Lindsay Lohan. Now, this movie actually was one of the first DVDs I actually got when I first got a TV with a built-in DVD player. And it was about Christmas time, and this was one of my first movies I got. And I love this. I haven't watched it in a long time, but I do love it. It's got Lindsay Lohan in it. Tina Fey is in it. I do love her performance. The cast is real good. Rachel McAdams, Lacey Chabert, Amanda Seyfried. Yeah, Lizzie Kaplan. Oh, the list could go on. It just has some of the great moments. I think you'd like it if you have not seen it. But it's good. Number 10 is Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Now, this is a film I just did a review of not so long ago. And I do love this movie. Starring Ben Stiller and Vince Vaughn. I gotta say, the... The final dodgeball tournament against Average Joe's and Global Gym is worth the watch. Uh -huh. You know, I think I forgot to mention my review. It was that I forgot to mention Jason Bateman was the air commentator next to Gary Cole. If I did, then I apologize. I got to 
I just got too carried away. I just hate it when that happens. But I, I do love this movie. The whole cast is good. Rip Torn is funny as the, the old version of Patches O'Hulahan. Yeah. Definitely worth checking out. I'd say what's the theatrical version. The Unreal one only has a few changes in the lines. Okay? To make it dirtier. But anyway, I like the theatrical version. Next at number nine is The Polar Express. Now, this has become another holiday favorite. I've now come to watch it now every Christmas time. Tom Hanks does a great job voicing characters he does, like the conductor the and even Mr. C. A lot of the performances we get from the rest to do the kids. I know one of them is A. Deason, who plays the kid with the glasses, the... I forgot his name now, and Nona Gay, who happens to be the daughter of the late great R&B superstar Marvin Gay. Yeah, you better believe it. Yeah, it's a little girl. Yeah, this movie's good. I actually got to hear the book last year. It's not too bad. I think you should watch the Paul Express if you have yet to see it. Number eight is a nerve flick I got from, from my first few DVDs, and that's The Day After Tomorrow, directed by Roland Emmerich. Although this... It's, it's close to its good Independence Day, except the course involves climate changes. It starts in this way, Jake Gyllenhaal, who of course we'll see in the new Spider-Man Far From Home later on next week. And and me, others, I, I actually love this movie when everything gets all snowed in and all. Man, this is, makes this movie more incredible when they try to get out and get some supplies and what have you. If you've never seen The Day After Tomorrow, I'd recommend you check it out. It's real good. Number seven is Shrek 2. Well, I do like this movie as much as I like its predecessor, but I'd say I still like the first one more. Mike Myers, A. Murphy, and Cameron Diaz are still good, actually. We get to hear some others, including Julie Andrews, John Cleese, and a host of others. It's not too bad of a twist, but... When Shrek becomes, well, human man and and Donkey becomes a stallion, incredible. Yeah, and we got Antonio Banderas' Puss in Boots. Really good. Shrek 2 is not too bad. That was another movie I got on DVD, my, one of my first few DVDs, too. Number 6 is 13 Going on 30, starring Jennifer Garner and Mark Ruffalo. Now, I love this movie. This was real good. If you've never seen this, but if you've seen Big with Tom Hanks, you'll definitely will want to see this. It's very good. I love the performances we got from Garner and Ruffalo. We had Judy Greer in this, Andy Serkis. And, well, I even liked the girl who played the young Jenna Rank, who I found out was Krista B. Allen, who a few years after this, I saw her play the title character on the short-lived Saturday Morning Show Cake. Yeah. It's not too bad. It's got a good age feel to it. And when we see Jenna as a young one, listen, Michael Jackson, all that jazz in the 80s. <laughs> but I do love this movie a lot. Number five is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now, I do like this movie, although it kind of just goes down from the last two movies, but I still enjoy the performances we got from the same people we see in the first one. I know since Richard Harris passed away, the original Dumbledore, and we got Sir Michael Gambon playing him, which he's not too bad. Now, Gary Oldman really was good at Sirius Black, though. David Thewlis as Professor Lupin, real good. Yeah, I'd, I'd still enjoy this. I also liked the Buckbeak, the Hippogriff. Really cool creature. Love it. Number four is Hellboy. Starring Ron Perlman in the title role, directed by Guillermo del Toro. I went and saw this. I love it. I think I'd rather watch this one than the remake they did not so long ago, which I know was a disappointment, but I still I showed a little justice for it, though. It's not too bad. I like the performances we got from Pearlman. Let's see. And Selma Blair as Liz Sherman. John Hurt as Professor Broom. All the rest of the cast was great. Number three is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Now, I 
Love this movie, although I don't watch Spongebob a whole lot. I only watch maybe the earlier seasons of it. But this movie is worth a watch. I will review this later on this year. Even though Spongebob's already celebrated his 20th anniversary, but I'm going to do this for the film's 15th anniversary later on. But I absolutely love this movie. We got great performances from the vo voice acting cast from the show. Tom, Cl Tom Clancy. Not... No way, not Tom Clancy. Whoops, sorry. Clancy, I'm mistaken for the writer. Tom Clancy was the writer of the, all those books. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, Clancy Brown, my mistake. He does Mr. Krabs. And Roger Bump has a square where Mr. Lawrence is Plankton. And of course, we got Bill Fager, Beckett, Patrick, and of course, Tom Kenny. That's who I was really trying to say. SpongeBob. Ah! Very fun movie. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's real funny. Number two is The Incredibles from Disney and Pixar. Now, as much as I really enjoyed last year's long-awaited sequel, I still love the original. I watched it last year to, before I went and saw the second one. It's real great. Great cast. Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Samuel L. Jackson, Jason Lee as Syndrome. Yeah. Real good movie. I do love it. This is probably one of my absolute favorite Disney Pixar movies. Probably going to be one of my top favorites along with the first two Toy Stories and Finding Nemo. Yeah. Enough said. Now, before I do number one, I'm going to do a rapid fire on honorable mentions. 51st Dates with Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Not too bad of a flick. A Cinderella Story with Hilary Duff. Pretty underrated, but fun. Oh, yeah, it's got Chad Michael Murray and Jennifer Coolidge. Now, one that doesn't get much mention, even though Bill Cosby's in prison. Fat Albert, Ken Thompson in the title role. Very good. Not as good as the cartoon series I've loved for many years. The Girl Next Door with Emil Hirsch and Alicia Cuthbert. Very underrated movie. It is raunchy, but it's still fun, though. Now, while I do like Meet the Parents, I kind of lost a little interest for this. Meet the Fockers. It's still pretty funny, though. I mean, doesn't Hot Man Barbara Streisand are greatest Greg's parents? Now, although I've only seen this a few times, National Treasure with Nicolas Cage. It's pretty fun and action-packed and adventurous. The Passion of the Christ. One of the most talked about movies of 2004 with Jim Caviezel. Yeah, pretty good. Good. I've only seen him one time, though. Now, well, I like the first one, but this one's okay. The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement, Anne Hathaway, and Julie Andrews are back. Still has some fun moments, though. The other is a Naruto I originally had on DVD as well. And that's Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Another underrated movie that doesn't get talked about. Starring Jude Law, along with Gwen Paltrow, and Angelia Jolie. I kind of lost interest in it, but I still have some fun moments from it though since it has a good feel of well an old superman cartoon from long ago called the mechanical monsters really good actually all right now coming at number one is spider-man 2 now this i got on dvd when i first got the dvd tv combo along with shrek 2 and mean girls i absolutely love this movie i'm going to be reviewing it tomorrow this movie is absolute fun. I love this just as much as the first movie. Tobey Maguire is great. Kirsten Dunst is great. James Franco's good. Everybody's good. But I did like Alfred Molina's portrayal as Doc Ock. Very good performance of his. It has so many memorable lines. But I'll talk about something like that when I review the movie tomorrow. I will review its predecessor though later on today. But anyway, what's your favorite movie of 2004? Please feel free to let me know in the comments section. Like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. And stay tuned. I'll be doing 2005 next time. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.